Welcome back to Talk Local on Cochico TV. Next, we're going to talk about the Grand Forno. Fondo. Fondo. Grand Fondo. Grand Fondo, which is a cycling event that's going to occur in August. And with me, I have two of the organizers. I have Dr. Glenn Madison and Glenn, or sorry, Ken McAlpine. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. So for those of you that have never heard of the Grand Forno, Fondo, well, you didn't correct it. What is it? A Grand Fondo is an Italian word for great big bike event. And it's become very popular in North America over the last five or six years. So we have taken that and uh, created a grand big bike event for Lampton County and surrounding areas. And this is the second year you're doing it's, it? It's the second year, correct. And last year was quite large. Last year we had over 500 participants and because it's our first year we limited uh, participation to 500. And so we closed down registration about six weeks before the event started. So this week we're going to, in, or this year we're going to increase to 750 and maybe even 800. So we'll try for 750 and see how that goes. Are you capping it this year? Or we will, we will cap it because there's d certain things. We give away a, a beautiful Giordana made in Italy jersey to all participants and we have to order them about two and a half months ahead of time. So we have to know the number. Plus there's right. goodie bags that goes to everybody with finishing medals and a whole lot of other things in them. So we have to know the numbers that we're giving away before the event. So you had 500 cyclists from Sarnia last year? Sarnia uh, was maybe about 75%. We had another uh, probably 50 from Michigan. We had them from as far away as BC, Quebec, Alberta, and a lot from the uh, Toronto Windsor Corridor. Leamington, uh, Toronto, London was a, was a big supporter with probably 20 to 40 cyclists from London. So you do a lot of advertising for this, getting the word out? So, I mean, uh, not as much as you'd think. It just sort of it was word of mouth. Really? And it just grew. It was quite amazing. We were astounded. We, were, we, would, we would have been happy with 200. And then it just kind of got bigger and bigger and bigger. Because that's a huge turnout for your first year. That's amazing. It's, uh, it was. We, we started what we called Wednesday night rides and uh, 12 weeks before the event started we, uh, we were holding these rides. The first night we put it on Facebook and we expected maybe 15 or 20 people to show up and we showed up and there was about 65, 70 people there. So my goodness what do we do now? And then that grew and to, we got to a point before the event we had about 110 cyclists out each Wednesday night that we were helping to ride. And Kelly, there's quite a number like you, you mentioned before the show started that you hadn't <laughs> biked <cruiser>. much. <laughs> but there was a lot of people that came from the couch to ride in 50K with us. So it's a wonderful emotional experience. What is the route? I know there's three. There's 50, 100, and 150, right? right. So where does it take you? You know better the, the, than I do. <laughs> <laughs> the, the 50K, the all routes start at Mike Weir Park, and it's the, the parking and the headquarters is at Mike Weir Park, and the route itself starts on the lake adjacent to Mike Weir Park, which is just a spectacular setting for the bike ride to start. And then the 50K goes out uh, Michigan and comes in through Oil Heritage and then back in Old Lakeshore. So it's 50K loop there. The 100K loop goes out to Arcona, does a small loop in Arcona in the hills there through the uh, fruit farms. And then the 150K does Arcona and carries on out to Thedford and does a loop through Thedford, then back through Arcona and back the same way. So the scenery is beautiful. The scenery is spectacular. You go through the orchards in, uh, in, Grand, in uh, Arcona, you go through s the, some of the rural land in Thedford, and then the fields back in, uh, along Old Lakeshore, and then you end up on the lake. So above and beyond the exercise that's involved and the feeling of accomplishment that you get, you're organizing this event for a cause. Absolutely, and Glenn can talk about that. So, so that's the sort of unique thing here, is that there's a lot of Grand Fondos, but most of them are for profit. This is, this is for basically giving back to the community. And we decided it was going to go to hospice palliative care. So uh, in both, both the hospice, St. Joseph's Hospice, and also palliative care at, at the hospital. And so what we did, we were able to actually send uh, five of our nurses, all expenses for a week, to the, the biggest palliative care conference in the world, which is in Montreal every two years. And they came back just all fired up with all the new knowledge. And we actually had a day in Grand Bend where we talked about what they learned. And it was really nice to see the two groups coming together. 
Um, so next year, we're gonna, it's going to be even bigger. We're, we're just like the Grand Fondo, it's going to be bigger. Our uh, education day is going to be, it's going to be actually two days, and we're, we're bringing in people. I've just got confirmation from um, a doctor from uh, John Hopkins in, in Baltimore is coming. Yeah. She probably has no idea where, where uh, Grand Bend or Sarnia is, um, and, but she's, this, this lady is probably the top uh, expert in palliative care medications in the world. And I, I was actually surprised that she kind of agreed to, to come. So it's really kind of uh, enabled us to, we're gonna bring in the rest of the, of, of now, now plan this, two, this two day uh, wow. conference out there. And there's, there's really nobody else, I don't think, that's, that's doing this. For a charity, which is what Sarnia does. It seems like anything we do, there's always that, that charity behind it. I would agree. Sarnia is a very giving community, and uh, if you have a passion for a certain, uh, a certain charity, then you get behind that. But the amount of money that Sarnia gives is fantastic for the small community. Yeah. Well, an example of that is when we, when we built the hospice. We had to raise yeah. $6 million during the 2008 recession. People say, well, how did you do it in a place called Sarnia? We did it. Because it's Sarnia. Because it's Sarnia, and people are amazing. And it's the hospice. It's and, a hospice. It, yeah. It's unfortunate anybody that has to use it, mm -hmm. but if anybody does have to use it, and I know we've had trouble, um, it, it's such an amazing experience to, to witness and, and to see the care that's given. So I think that's definitely a charity in Sarnia that people are very given to. Yeah. And, the s and the some of the cyclists that have come from Toronto and, and from out of town have said that, one of the, because they've been involved in palliative care in their community, and they say, here, I'm coming to, to, to this place to do this bike ride, but this is great that, that our, my money is going into this cause. So they, they really think that's, that's fantastic. And they haven't, they haven't seen anything like that in no. other places. And it's a win-win. It really is. It is. Right? You get that accomplished feeling that you've done that. I'm not committing to doing it. I'm yeah, committing to coming you're down You're a lot closer to where we are. I yeah. think we need to oh. <laughs> <We, we laughs> see you on Wednesday <laughs> night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my husband's sitting on the couch just shaking his head. <laughs> I can just see him. Um, so I saw a little clip, and we're going to show the video. But like, this is not just a bike ride. There is a band, and there's this is an event. We've created a, an event. If people are coming from out of town, or even local people, that the the ride is the focal point. But you want more than the ride. After you, the ride is finished, you're you're tired, you're accelerated, you're excited. But it's nice if you can hang out with your friends have some food, listen to the band, maybe have a beer. Mike Weir Park in August is spectacular. It's yep. hard to beat it. You can jump in the lake, have a swim. So the, the band is Offsite Impact, a local band. They donate their time, fantastic band. And uh, then uh, Refined Fools helps us out with the beer and the Lions Club from Petrolia helps us out with food. Okay, so there's good music. Good music. Fantastic beer, amazing food, good times. We're going to watch the video so the folks at home can get a little taste of what it's like. And if they don't bike, maybe they'll come out for the aftermath. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Stay tuned. We'll be right back on Talk Local, Coach Co TV. I think it's probably a year ago when we were all at the bike club talking about this. It was just a dream at that point. And I started hearing about the Grand Fondo both through John Palumbo and Ken McAlpine, who I cycle with regularly. And as it started to build momentum, I realized that this was a lot bigger than what I thought it was going to be. Right, I've never done an organized ride before. It's always been um, with a guide, you know, somewhere in the backwoods of Italy or something. So this was the first time doing um, Grand Fondo. I never would have realized this whole experience would be so much fun. The county is beautiful. Riding through some nice country roads. The roads are well paved. I couldn't have asked for more. I understand there were 530 cyclists today, and John told me yesterday that we could have easily had 750 with all the people they turned away. Half the family's doing the 100K and half the family's doing the 50K. And we all just met here at the 50K rest stop, which is awesome. Glad the rain has held off so far. It's going pretty good. Uh, pretty good pace, not too windy, all that. So yeah, good stuff. The moves are good. And, uh, the staff is really good, it's just well organized. That's really good, so hopefully to do it again next year too. Yeah, it's kind of nice to have a, a local event like this. It's been a great ride, beautiful day. 
a shout out to the organizers. They've done a fantastic job, well run, good camaraderie. It's really great. We live in the city and so we have to fight traffic all the time. And it's nice out here to be passing all the cows and the farms and um, lots of people out here cheering. I mean, the organizers have picked a wonderful course. It's a little bit of rolling hills. It's a very few cars. So. Oh, it's, it's absolutely terrific. Diverse, a uh, bit of wind, a uh, lot of hills, uh, beautiful scenery. It's just it's just all around really good. Yes, you're right. I'm all over the county with what I do. And to be able to just coast along and see our beautiful agricultural area, all the cornfields and all the different crops, it was quite lovely. And again, when we started out along the water, and just reminds you to slow down and take it all in. I can't even think of a better rider than my friend Z here. She's actually the first quadriplegic to uh, to do a Grand Fondo, and we're pretty excited to have her here. She's been smiles the whole way. You talk about teamwork, she's the heart. I'm just simply the legs, and together we're, we're doing the impossible. There has been a phenomenal, just phenomenal community response to this. The uh, numerous sponsors, too many to mention at this, this point in time, but it's been incredible. The county has been a huge supporter of what we're doing. Phenomenal uh, organizing committee that helped put all of this together. And of course, many, many volunteers. We had about 120 volunteers growing. We, we expect that it's going to be bigger next year. So it's been an overwhelming success in terms of getting people out, getting people active, raising the awareness for both Blue Water Health and, and uh, St. Joseph's Hospice. I mean, these organizers outdid themselves, and I think they were even taken aback by uh, the level of success we had today. I feel extremely happy with the way it turned out. So this would be uh, termed an overwhelming success. So it could be just an even bigger, better event next year. Well, that's last year's. This year will be bigger. So what was some of the feedback you got from, especially those who came from out of town for it? The, the uh, out of town uh, response without exception was this is one of the best events we've ever done. The, uh, the location was spectacular. The start on Lake, uh, on Lake Huron, we had people, we were using the parking lot at Mike Weir Park, we had people walking, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, it's a little path down. And when they got through the path and past the trees, they were stopping, they were so astounded by the view, they were stopping taking pictures of the iPhone at the start of the lake area and the sandy beach and the whole setup. So the, the positive attitude at the start was great. The volunteers, we had about 150 volunteers. The volunteers looked after them so well. We had outriders on motorcycles for safety. We had Sarnia police stopping traffic on the road crossing Lakeshore Road and we had tremendous volunteers and food at, the, at all the fuel stops along the way. So the response, and then when they came back, there was music, there was beer, there was food again. It was a tremendous response. And the other thing was, was Blackwell Cycle. I had three, three cars going out there to help people when they had flats. There was one lady who had to quit another race because her chain broke and she assumed she was gonna quit and then the, the guys came along and said, well, we can fix that. She couldn't believe it. Get back on your bike, you can finish. And go. And yeah, so it was that tremendous support. Because it, it's a race, but it's, 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 it's not a, like it is a race, but it's still, it's, it's set up event. in a very special way where you can ride with friends if you want, but then there's time sections along the way. Right. So when you come to a time section, there's a big flag, it marks it one kilometer to go to the t start, then the time section is marked in the road and with a flag, and then you can let your competitive juices flow as much as you want, go as hard as you can in the time sections, and then at the end of the time section, you can wait for your buddy, or your buddy waits for you, or, or you wait for your wife, or your wife waits for you, however it might be. And then you can ride together to the next fuel station or the next time section. And then guys were starting to bet a little bit on each other, you know, whether it's a beer or a buck or whatever. Right. But it became very competitive, and we have state-of-the-art timing equipment where the, your time, as soon as you have finished the time section, it gets beamed up to a satellite, and then you can download that in real time on your phone. So if someone's at home watching, they can see your, your time, basically as soon as you've crossed the finish line of the time section. And then the person with the lowest accumulated time over the various time sections got the prize in the various age group categories that we had. So how many different categories are there? We had them starting from uh, 19 to 60 plus. So I think I ended up nine male, female in each, uh, in each race distance. So it was 18 times three. 
Wow. So a lot of plaques. And you both ride? We both ride a lot, yeah. A lot. So any of the feedback that you got from last year, did it prompt changes for this year? Yeah, some of the, so we, we've done some uh, change with the routes. Okay. There was just too much congestion on, on Lakeshore. So um, I, I guess that our, our biggest complaint was they couldn't get in. People, people get very upset because we, we capped it. Oh. And, and peop that, that was the biggest complaint. We get some very <laughs> nasty emails. <laughs> yeah. I've been training for this all winter and yeah. all summer and I can't get in. You've got to let me in. And you know, my wife's cousin lives so in Sarnia. <laughs> <laughs> we got some of the most so, the worst emails yeah. from people who couldn't get in. So, but I guess that's a sign of success, that, right? Like yeah. for someone who says they've been training for it all winter and they couldn't get in, when did registration open, or is it open now? For it's, this it's, year? it's open now. It's open now this year, but this time last year we had barely conceived the idea. So a, the website wasn't up. Registration started in March last year. We opened registration up about four weeks ago, and we have over 170 probably about 180 now actually registered. Already? Yeah. So we tried to help people out as much as possible last year where we let, let another 20 or 25 in, but we had only ordered 500 shirts, but then we tried to get an extra 20 shirts for the, for the people involved, so we had to go back to Italy with a special order and they're still not here yet. So the 20 shirts caused more problems for us than the 500 we got before, but they'll be here very soon. Wow. And the other problem with the shirts were they were Italian fitting. So I think either people didn't realize their size or they didn't realize that Italians like things really tight. So uh, one thing, we, if, if people are out there registering for next year, we would tell them to go up one size. The European fit. So. Yeah. All I can picture is is that commercial with the tiny shirt. That, that <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's that was, there was a lot of that. There was a lot of that. Yeah. So that but that would be the challenge. The shirts were too tight, and people couldn't get in. That would be the two biggest complaints. And you've already ordered the shirts for we this year. We have not year. ordered them yet. We have designed them. So we okay. had to work with Giordani in Italy, working on the design. We wanted the, the design to be somewhat similar to last year, but complement it, but be a cousin and not a twin. So when does registration, when does it, like when, when's the last time you can register? Whenever we hit 750. Okay, so which is there Which will almost certainly happen. Yeah. We'll cap it out, I'm sure, again, yeah. based yeah. on last year. So yeah. don't wait till, la no. till last no. minute Definitely and then not. send a nasty email that you, didn't, you couldn't no. get in. Right. It might even be after tonight's show, maybe tomorrow morning. <laughs> hey, I, you know what, you never know. Because it'll be on here and then it'll be on Facebook and, yeah. but it, it's, word of mouth really travels, especially this day and age with mm -hmm. the internet. Like it just, somebody hears about it or somebody participates and it sends the link and all of a sudden you've got 1,500 people who want to do this. Sure. What will you do then when it gets that well, big? Uh, I think we can build up the, we, we have to find out what the limiting factor will be, whether it will be the roads, might we park can hold a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, and refined fools can make enough beer for everyone. So oh yeah, all Nathan <laughs> and the boys will have no problem <laughs> keeping up with that and one. And Blackwell Cycle can certainly look after bikes, so it might be the capacity of, of the roads, but I, I, we're not sure. Maybe we break it into four different distances. Wow. Well, well. Um, thank you for coming in to talk about it. It was definitely a learning experience for me when I first heard about it. I had no idea. So I will be out to check it out. I don't know that I'll be on a bicycle. <laughs> I might be on my bicycle, but I won't <laughs> be on 50K. Um, but we will be out with cameras again to, to videotape it and showcase it next year. So it is when? August 6th. And that's a Saturday? That's a Sunday. That's it's a Sunday. Sunday of the long weekend in August. Okay. First, uh, Sunday in August. And registration is on now? www.bigf.ca.